Hi, my name is Chris Searcy. I'm a 19-year veteran of the fire service as an interior firefighter and an instructor for the state of Pennsylvania. Since going on the job, the only constant has been the technology in the fire service is always changing. One of the biggest advances has been the introduction of the thermal imaging camera. Thermal imaging cameras are the most advanced technology in the fire service and also the most underutilized. Each department that I have been in has used the cameras in different ways. Over the years of using thermal cameras, I have seen the durability and functionality of them improve. Today's cameras produce a much clearer screen and provide firefighters with more valuable information. To gain the most out of a thermal imaging camera, it is important to understand the information that the camera is delivering to you. Today I want to review what information the camera is delivering, the limitations and the potential of thermal imagers and what they are fully capable of doing. Being able to interpret the information that is coming from a thermal imaging camera will make your operations fast, safe, and more efficient. The thermal imaging camera can be an extremely useful tool, but only if the user is properly trained in its operational functions and image interpretation. In order to successfully use a camera, you must be properly trained with your specific camera model and know the fundamentals in thermal imaging. This webinar should not substitute a formal training with the thermal imaging camera. Thermal imaging cameras can be a useful tool, but to utilize a tick to its fullest potential requires understanding the basics of this technology. Cameras by design will provide information that must be able to be interpreted properly by the user. Successfully doing this will make operations fast, safe, and more efficient, as well as using this tool in additional applications which can further benefit your department. Here's what we already know about cameras. Ticks do not require light to work because they detect long-wave infrared radiation that will allow them to see through smoke and dust. We also know that some thermal imaging cameras can be used to locate the seat of a fire or the hottest part and that there should be more to the training of thermal imaging cameras beyond how to change the battery. Infrared radiation is a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum and is a form of energy which we perceive as heat. Like I said before, Ticks detect long-wave infrared radiation that is between 7 to 14 microns. When referencing objects in regards to infrared radiation, the objects will either absorb, reflect, transmit, or emit thermal energy. For example, typical furniture will absorb thermal energy. Shiny surfaces, such as glass or stainless steel, will reflect thermal energy. Clothing will transmit infrared radiation, and emitters can be people, animals, or the fire itself that is producing thermal energy. There are three different emitters of infrared energy. One would be passive. These are the objects in the room that can be heated and cooled. In this picture you can see how the heat is being absorbed into the particle board. Two is active. These are the objects that produce their own thermal energy. And in this picture this would be the firefighters. These are not always easily seen in the camera and they can be covered. Three is direct source. These will give off the most thermal energy and is easily detected with the thermal imaging camera. In this picture, it would be the fire itself. Thermal imaging is not like x-ray. It does not see through walls and objects. What the tick will do, as shown in this slide, is it will see the heat footprint on the exterior side of the wall due to the heat being generated from the fire burning on the inside. The heat from the fire is absorbing into the outside wall itself, creating infrared radiation that can be then detected by the tick. But please realize that different building materials will absorb thermal energy differently and can limit the thermal imager's ability to detect the heat. Remember that it is all proportional to the amount of heat that is also coming from the inside. The reason that cameras will have a clearer picture when a heat source is present is because there is a greater range of temperatures within that scene. The greater the temperature differences, the greater the detail on the image. If all the objects in this room are the same temperature, those objects would not be visible within the display of the tick. The more thermal sensitivity a camera has, the better it will be able to see the small temperature differences, making it easier for you to see the details in the objects. No two cameras work the same. Again, it is important to understand that thermal cameras work by detecting temperature differences. Cameras can also pick up convection energy or the movement of heat. In this video of the training burn, you will see the convection waves moving through the ceiling level. Interpreting this can be very effective in locating the fire and allowing a safer, quicker extinguishment. Let's talk about high and low contrast. Low contrast, the room being shown is at ambient temperature or low contrast. 
All the objects are close to the same temperature, so the detail will not be as clear. You can see the subtle temperature differences when you look at the couch. Now we will introduce a heat source that will switch the screen to a high contrast scene. We have increased the detail of that image so you can clearly see all objects in that room due to a wider range of temperature differences. This is due to high thermal energy and subsequent high differences in rates of energy absorption. From the high contrast image, you can see the right arm and right front cushion of the couch getting hotter than the rest of the couch. This is pointing to the direction of the fire. Certain thermal cameras will change the thermal contrast by shifting or changing modes to extend the camera's dynamic range. This helps the firefighter identify that the camera has gone into a low sensitivity or high contrast mode. Please note that there are now cameras on the market that will not have this shift or change that can be seen in the display. That is why it is important to see an icon that will tell the firefighter that the camera has now advanced into the next dynamic range, which will look like the standardized symbol noted in the picture. In standard mode, all thermal imaging cameras use a grayscale palette with black indicating the coldest areas of the scenery and white indicating the hottest. All temperatures in between are displayed in appropriate shades of gray. It is called white-hot polarity. This way the camera can offer the best contrast for a whole variety of different sceneries and situations. One drawback of this is that just by looking at a given scenery, it can be difficult to decide if a white object is just a bit warmer than everything else or if it is really hot and should be investigated closer. By introducing color at distinct temperatures either preset by the manufacturer or adjustable by the user, it is easier to distinguish between just warm and unusually hot. Usually this color starts with yellow and changes to orange and finally red as the temperature increases. You now know why cameras have two modes and why it is good to be able to extend your dynamic range. Next we will talk about understanding your kick-in points. Camera manufacturers today have different kick-in points. Determining the temperatures within the display will trigger when the camera goes into low sensitivity mode. It is important that you know your specific manufacturer's settings and kick-in points which can usually be found in the manufacturer's operating manual or online. Proper training and specific knowledge of your camera should be required for proper use. When entering the structure and doing a proper scan, the camera can be used to gain pertinent tactical information regarding the fire. By reading the thermal layer, direction of convection heat waves, and IR absorbed by objects can assist in leading you to the seat of the fire. That being said, you should never fully rely on the thermal imaging camera. Proper visual size up, safe operating procedures, and common sense should always be used. Remember how we told you in the beginning how infrared energy can be emitted, reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. We gave examples of how IR is emitted, absorbed, and even transmitted, but we never discussed the reflection. Infrared energy can be reflected and that's why thermal cameras cannot see through glass and that's why cameras sometimes reflect off of shiny objects such as mirrors, shiny metals, or surfaces. This is important to remember when you might think you see the seat of the fire in front of you, but in reality it could be in another direction. In the presentation you will see two pictures. One shows a firefighter clearly seen inside the bay area of the fire station. Once we shut the glass bay door, we can see the firefighter through the glass with our own eyes, but will not be able to see him through the thermal imaging camera. That person you see in the image is not the firefighter in front of you, but the photographer's reflection. This too can happen when using a tick in a fire. Here is an example of how infrared can be reflected and give firefighters false information. I heard of a story about when an engine company responded and made entry into a single family dwelling fire. With the initial view of the camera, the fire appeared to be located in the family room, but in reality, the fire was in the common area of the kitchen. What they thought was the fire was actually reflection off of a large TV screen. The fire originated in the kitchen. I have also heard a number of stories of similar instances in responding to commercial kitchens that use stainless steel or shiny surfaces that are in abundance in the cooking area. To avoid false readings, scanning the room from different angles is a must. Thermal cameras cannot see through water. Water and other liquids are not transparent on a tick. Only temperature differences on the surface will be visible. A lot of people are under the false assumption that ticks can be used to locate people underneath the water. This is not true. It is, however, possible to locate a victim in the water as long as the body is above the surface and the body temperature is different than that of the water temperature. That is also another reason why cameras have reduced visibility in thick fog and sprayed water. Condensation on the tick's lens, as seen in the picture, can affect the image. Recognizing this problem and taking appropriate actions can help alleviate this problem. A good habit to get into 
is when you have to wipe your mask, you should also wipe the lens and viewing display of the camera. Another limitation with a tick is that they require heat in order to produce an image. As in this picture, using a tick in a subway can make it very difficult due to the low range of temperature differences. On the same note, a smaller elevated temperature difference will appear more evident. This will also happen in areas such as tunnels, cellars, and subways. Thermal imaging cameras cannot detect gases, even at high heat. What they can detect is the indirect effects of the heated gases. Cameras have the ability to detect the liquid level inside a container, but there are several factors to consider before making that determination. From the pictures in the presentation, you can see two shiny cylinders. The one on the top left has a painted mark on the can and added two strips of masking tape. On the slide below it, you can see where the liquid level is on the container where the can was painted and taped. However, you cannot see the liquid level on the shiny surface because it is reflecting the infrared radiation. The other two pictures on the right are showing a shiny cylinder. That black mark on the bottom right picture is not the liquid level, but is actually reflecting the sky above. Simply change your camera angle to gain a different perspective. It is important to understand and identify the limitations of ticks before using them. Be sure to practice with your camera and identify what your camera looks like during these situations. There are many benefits to using a thermal imaging camera in the fire service. The longer firefighters are exposed to this technology, the more they find additional uses for them. Along with using them to see through smoke in firefighting applications, they can be used during size up, accountability, search and rescues, stream application, and overhaul, as well as hazmat applications, vehicle accidents, wildland, and training applications. The more manufacturers enhance thermal imaging cameras and firefighters use them, the more applications and benefits a tick can provide to a fire department. As we learned before, a tick can assist firefighters in seeing through a smoke-filled environment and locating the seat of the fire. Properly scanning the room and using information interpreted from the tick can help form a tactical plan in extinguishing the fire. We talked about how ticks cannot see through walls. However, the contents from inside can heat the outer walls, which can give the firefighters tactical information before entering into a structure. Being able to use the camera during a size up can provide that essential information prior to going in. Can you tell where the fire is in the picture below? In the right hand picture, the fire is located in the back room. You see it now? Ticks have been used in many successful victim rescues. In this video, you can see a tick assist in locating a downed firefighter who was then dragged to safety. Cameras are also a good indicator in determining if you are winning the battle with the fire by watching the stream application. Are you cooling down the room? In the video, you notice how the firefighter applies two short pencil streams into the direction of the ceiling to assist in cooling down the environment. You can see the effects of this application by the yellow color going away after the stream has been applied. The tick is a great tool for maintaining crew accountability. A quick scan can provide the knowledge that all firefighters from your company are still present. However, this should not take the place of routine personal accountability reports with verbal announcement. After the fire has been extinguished, a tick is a great tool to assist with salvage and overhaul. Locating smoldering hidden hotspots can prevent a return trip to that same location later that day for a fire that is rekindled. Cameras are useful in hazmat applications. They can be used to track leaks to their source, regain sight and zero visibility, monitor the product movement and their associated temperatures, identify leaking compressed gas cylinders, monitor cooling efforts on a container, and locate invisible fires such as hydrogen and methanol. That being said, there are several limitations that can, be, that can become a factor for accurately using a tick for this application. They are container material, construction, environmental conditions, product state and the thermal imager sensitivity. In the picture listed, you can determine the amount of liquid that is remaining in the container. In this video, you can see how we were able to track the leak back to its source. A tick can be a useful tool at the scene of a motor vehicle accident. It can help determine the number of occupants within the vehicle. It can help locate an ejected passenger as well as a possible dangerous fluid leak or compartment fire. A tick is a great tool for training. If the camera allows you to record the video, the information gathered can be replayed for the crews involved, enabling operational issues and or mistakes that need to be addressed. Cameras are also a great tool for training for firefighter safety. Trainers can use a camera to monitor their students to ensure their safety. It's also important to get comfortable with a camera and to understand the information that the camera is giving you. 
Training with your camera is a great way to develop that comfort level that will allow you to deploy the camera in multiple firefighting applications. Continuous training will also improve your accuracy with interpretation as well as functionality. The more comfortable you are with the camera, the greater the understanding of the multiple uses in different applications. I hope this webinar has laid a foundation for proper use and image interpretation of the thermal imaging camera. Being able to apply that information tactically will make the operation fast, safe, and more efficient. Make sure you know your camera's limitations and kicking points. Cameras are a useful tool for many applications beyond firefighting. Don't forget to practice with your thermal imaging camera and understand the useful tool it is and how it can be used to its fullest potential. I hope you found the information in this webinar helpful and learned a little more about the different applications that thermal imaging cameras can be used for in the fire service. Last, I would like to thank Drager for hosting this free webinar on thermal imaging cameras. Thanks, Chris. A lot of great information. Hello, my name is Greg Cessney, Product Manager for Thermal Imaging Cameras at Drager. I want to thank Chris Searcy for speaking on this important topic of thermal imaging cameras. And I want to let you know that you can go to drager.com backslash webinars to view all of the free webinars on topics from HCNCO, flashovers, and now thermal imaging cameras. You can also find more information on Drager's new thermal imaging cameras at Drager.com. For more information on tactical thermal imaging camera training, you can go to SafeIR.com. Thank you again for joining us. Train safe, train often, and thanks for watching.